Hi and welcome to this new small tutorial and today we are going to review how to save modifiers present and share them with the world. So first let's go into the browse examples here and open this composition. Alright, let's delete everything that's in the bottom. Alright. And so what I'm going to do is to create a um, chain of modifier, some modifier. So let's start with color exposure. And as you see here, you have some preset icons. So you have access to some preset in many different modifiers, but you cannot save them, not using this technique anyway. So we are going to see how uh, to do the way uh, things differently. So let's add uh, like a little bit of uh, contrast in my uh, exposure. Let's uh, desaturate for instance right let's add a vignette uh, but not using a layer but using uh, modifier so for instance an exposure so let's recall rename that vignette so what i'm doing here is a little bit ugly but it's just for demonstration purposes do not judge me please so let's add a radial mask on this modifier on this exposure modifier invert a little feather all right, will be enough. And let's add the modifier that uh, makes things uh, go smoother, like a little sharpen that I will not set up. I will leave it uh, this way. And a little chromatic aberration to add this uh, kind of distortion here on the side. So to avoid this like bounce uh, sample effect, you can augment a little bit the iteration, but be very, Precautious with that because it can quickly become too much heavier. So now I have my whole bunch of modifiers and I want to save them, to reuse them uh, as is uh, on many different uh, compositions. So first thing first, I will select them and group them together. So either uh, doing a Control Shift uh, G like that, Control Shift G, all right, or Control Z, doing a right click group here, control shift G. So let's call that master effect. And now I have uh, my master effect modifier, which is actually a compilation uh, of all of these modifiers. So let's uh, export uh, this modifier. Uh, so doing a right click, export 2D modifiers group and put that into my small modifier called that master effect, all right. And right now, if I'm going to this folder, I can see my smod master effect here. So let's suppress this effect. And if I import this modifier here, I can really import them, import. And then you see that all my modifiers has been imported uh, as um, I saved them. And what I can do also is import them as reference. And now I have no more access to this modifier. And this master effect is currently a reproduction, a reference of this modifier. So if I double click here, uh, you see that I cannot see them quite well here, but just for the demonstration, I will change the U of my modifier and do a control S, control save. So you will see that my save uh, will work because this little star here is not appearing anymore. And no. Let's reopen and let's add saturation also. Saturation and all right, control S. And you see that uh, this has been repercuted uh, to my reference. Uh, so now let's push a little bit further uh, this thing. So let's right click and import this effect. So let's uh, put back my saturation by default. So right click default value and uh, lower the saturation as it was before. So now I want that inside my modifier, I want to have uh, access to some parameter, for instance, uh, the opacity of the, of the vignette or the, the desaturation. So for instance, uh, let's uh, change the exposure and do a right click, expose as percentage parameter. And now you see that my exposure intensity has been set up into my parameter bank that I, the parameter bank I already had. Uh, but what I want to do is to expose this parameter inside my modifier. So what I want to do is right click on my modifier, uh, tool, bank, parameters bank here, 
and put my exposure inside of this parameter monk. And now I have my feather here that is managing my uh, the intensity of my exposure uh, modifier, as you can see here. And now what I want to do is, for instance, to have a control, uh, a slider that control both my vignette and my chromatic uh, aberration, for instance. Uh, again, that's just an example. So let's uh, do a right click expose as percentage parameter here. And let's call this uh, chroma and vignette. All right. And now if I select this chroma and vignette and go into the function editor, I can see that my vignette intensity is now uh, triggered here uh, by this slider. And let's add uh, this distortion parameter of the chromatic aberration inside this slider. So I have two ways of doing that. How I can right click on this parameter, connect to chroma and vignette, this one. Or what I can do uh, when I have the right slider selected uh, inside my function editor here, I can drag and drop the distortion parameter. And now you see that my chroma and vignette has two uh, different targets, chromatic aberration and vignette intensity. And let's say that at the 0% of the sliders, uh, my chromatic aberration, uh, my distortion will be at zero. And at 100% will be at, let's say three, will be enough. All right. And now I have a slider that is currently doing, making my vignette appear. Let's reduce your radial mask a little bit. All right. That is making my vignette appear. And also that is triggering my chromatic aberration. And now if I export uh, my master effect, so export and replace modifier group by reference. Uh, small modifier, master effect, it will automatically increment. So I already have a master effect point uh, 2DM, 2DM is uh, 2D modifiers. So when I save as master effect, it will actually create a master effect too, as you see here. And now on my reference here, I have two sliders, one for the vignette intensity and one for the chroma and vignette. And of course, if I go in any other composition, like this one, for instance, and import my master effect as a reference, then I have access to my master effect with, uh, with its uh, two sliders. So like that, you can export very quickly and very easily uh, a whole bunch of modifiers present, but you can go uh, way, way more further uh, by doing some crazy shit with a modifier which is called the compo base. So to show how it works, let's right click on utility, compo base. And as you see, compo base modifier is a modifier that contains a composition. So that contains a whole bunch of layers, any kind of layers, anything that you could put into a composition. And the parent input layer here is actually uh, a reproduction of every pixel that enter into the compo base modifier. So for instance, I have a parent input layer here that is just reproducing my whole composition. And if I put that parent layer like that, duplicate it and put that here, then what is currently doing my compo base is just taking my input image into the compo base modifier and duplicate it in two different layers. And of course I can do as many modifications as I, my uh, imaginations uh, told me to do. Uh, so as you may see, we can do some crazy shit with this compo base modifier and to do some little exercise, let's open the connect point point compo and let's try to do a modifier that will take any input image uh, and duplicate it on any sprite points I have here in my composition. So first let's put a little bit less, uh, less point like that will be enough. And now what I will do is put a sample image to see if our modifier is currently working. So I will use a video input layer, which is actually my webcam, which is kind of a shitty webcam. So that's the best we will have. So let's use that. So my purpose here will be to duplicate my face on each one of these points. So let's start by creating a utility compo based modifier here. And inside the composition here, what I will do is put the random point, 
put the camera. Do would you want to make the camera as current? Of course I want, my dear. And the glow over my overall composition. And so right now, what I have is just that. And so what I want to do is to take everything that goes inside the compo base modifier and that will be duplicated on each one of these points. So what I want to do actually is put my apparent input layer inside my sprite point, uh, my sprite point. So let's suppress the dot white here. And right now it does not do anything because I deactivated my video input. So right now the uh, image that goes into the compo base is just a full black. So let's reactivate my video input and my compo base. And as you see, let's enlarge a little bit the spike points. That, oh, miracle, it worked. And my glow is a little bit over the top. Let's add a little radial mask over this. All right. And for uh, the purpose of this exercise, let's uh, put the sprite as depth sorted and aument a little bit the size of, uh, of the line. All right. And now I will expose uh, some parameters into my compo base. Uh, so for instance, I can expose the glow, uh, intensity of the glow. So expose as percentage parameter, glow intensity. And again, put this parameter bank inside my compo base. I will expose uh, the size of my spike points. So expose as percentage parameter. Let's say that minimum value will be zero. Maximum value will be 1.5. That's all right. And so right now, if I go into my function editor, I see that my spike point goes from zero to 1.5 meters. And of course, I need to link my point. So, all right, it reduces well. And now I have my these two different uh, these two different value. And let's add the value for the size of the tick line. Expose the percentage parameter, and let's go from zero to one. All right. And now I will put the glow intensity to zero and leave this parameter uh, like that. And now if I export my compo based modifier, export compo based, small training media, small modifier, and let's call that uh, point cloud plexus repeater, for instance, that's a fancy name. And now I have a new compo base point cloud plexus repeater modifier, and let's put that into another composition. Mm, which one, which one? Ah, oh, this one, maybe, will be a nice example. Tum, 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 tum. So let's use my point cloud modifier as a reference. And as you see right now, it's just taking the input image and duplicate it uh, into my point cloud uh, plexus repeater with the modifiers I exposed. Uh, set uh, as when I save them. So glow intensity is in 0%. Of course, I can augment that. I have the sprite point size of my object, like that. And I have the thickness of my line. So you see how to make some pretty crazy uh, modifiers. And for instance, a little modifier I made just before. Let's use that over um, uh, this composition, for instance is the old movie here uh, and let's hope it work because i did that on another version of the software so let's see reference it work and as you see in this uh, modifier it has a lot of different sliders like the noise uh, like the noise dodge and scratches and also the shake amplitude ah shit and also the shake amplitude and wait a minute Always, always the phone ringing at the wrong time. And now uh, what is fine with this kind of modifier is that uh, with this, uh, the compo base modifier is that you can also add into them some animation, uh, some animation. So right now I have a 2D transform that is currently uh, shaking my image. So you can do a lot and lot of 
crazy shit uh, with this modifier. And now, for those who want to practice, you can try to uh, transform the FireFX composition into a modifier. So if you want to practice, do not uh, look at the remaining of the video. And I will just do that very quickly because right now it's just a um, shared element. So source layer here. And if I right click on this shared element, I see that my shared element, which is currently an image of the Mona Lisa, is used uh, to mask some particles and to colorize uh, some particles into a 3D plane. So let's transform this Firefix uh, composition into a modifier. So I will create a utility uh, compo based modifier. Into my compo based, I will reuse uh, the plane emitting my particle here. I will put my camera. Yes. I will put uh, this modifier over my composition like that. And what I will do is see uh, where my uh, shared element is actually shared. So in these two layers and replace them by the parent input layer. So if I'll drag and drop, use as map, use as map. All right. And right now you see that nothing more is happening because right now, as I break, I broke everything down. Uh, my input layer is currently uh, a black, uh, black image. So let's reuse, uh, for instance, this IMAP face here and reactivate my compo based modifier. And you see that's working. So what it's currently doing is right now, I have uh, a composition uh, into my compo based modifier. Let's suppress uh, the background parrot input layers will be better. And let's put my composition with no alpha layer. All right. And now I have a composition with a camera, a plane emitting particles. And the plane, uh, the particles are emitted uh, from the source image, uh, the parent input image. And then you have now your for FX modifier that you can, uh, of course, export. Small training media, small modifier. All right. And let's uh, see if it work on another composition. I'm not quite sure it will work because I have mm, quite an old computer, so maybe there's uh, too much uh, particle in this FireFX modifier to work in any situation, but uh, we'll see. Let's import. And you see that it's going crunk crunk. Yeah, it works. Okay. So now you have uh, your way to create and share your modifiers uh, with the world. I hope this tutorial has been useful to you. And if you have any question, of course, do not hesitate to ask. Uh, and sorry for this fucking phone ringing in the middle of the tutorial. So see you later.